Hello, everyone. I am Rahul, a project coordinator here at, at the Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. And today we will be discussing how to build AI trust with explainability. And in particular, we will see how to use the AIX360 toolkit for the same. To help keep everything in context, here is an overview of what we will be covering. We will start with an introduction to the principles of AI Trust and the AIX360 toolkit, which helps put those principles into practice. Then we will spend some time walking through a use case, an AI model that diagnoses breast cancer to demonstrate how to use a few of the algorithms in the toolkit. Finally, we will offer an example of how these tools can also be used for more intricate deep learning projects. Let's first start with a brief introduction to trust in artificial intelligence. Technological advancements theoretically are a welcome development for us, but in practice, trying to look at it from a legal proceedings perspective as highlighted by an article in the New York Times, there are aspects of automation that are making the justice system less fair for criminal defendants. The root of the problem is that automated criminal justice technologies are largely privately owned and sold for profit. The developers for these technologies tend to view their products as trade secrets. As a result, they often refuse to disclose details about how their tools work, even to criminal defendants and their attorneys, and even under a protective order or in the controlled context of a criminal proceeding or parole hearing. So what is trust? We all know what it feels like, but it can be tricky to define subjectively. Roger C. Mayer and the other authors of an integrative model of organizational trust define it as the willingness of a party to be vulnerable to the actions of another party. They continue their explanation saying, this willingness is based on certain expectations that the other will perform a particular action and that this willingness is completely separate from any ability to monitor or control the other party. In a sense, what they're trying to say is, if you could be sure that the other party will keep its side of the bargain, you don't need to trust. It is when you aren't sure or don't feel the need to make sure that trust enters the equation. Now, trust implies trustworthiness. If you trust a party, you believe that they can and will deliver what they are offering. However, there is a difference between being trustworthy and being trusted. Even if you are trustworthy, you may not necessarily be trusted. The truster must consciously decide to be vulnerable to you, and they generally do so based on how trustworthy you seem to be. Now let's understand what all of this means in terms of artificial intelligence. As AI becomes more embedded, in daily business operations and begins to make more crucial decisions, it has become imperative that it is both trustworthy and trusted. Unfortunately, AI is mysterious even to its own engineers sometimes, so it is difficult to demonstrate its trust trustworthiness. Even though the power of AI and machine learning is incalculable and the good it can do is so great, the general public does not currently trust AI. In response to this, IBM Research has outlined five pillars which can be used to strengthen tools for AI. Here are these five pillars. Transparency, the operation of AI solutions must be visible and available for examination by qualified experts. Explainability states that AI solutions must include means of offering 
clear and relevant explanations of their decisions to diverse audiences. Fairness states that AI solutions must reduce human bias and further the equitable treatment of individuals and of groups of individuals. Robustness states that AI solutions must be robust enough to handle exceptional conditions effectively and to minimize security risk. Privacy states that AI solutions must ensure privacy at every turn, not only of the raw data, but also of the insights gained from that raw data. Let us now look at all of these pillars in detail and understand their importance in the AI realm. Starting with explainability, that stands for the ability to provide a clear and relevant explanation of a model's decision. This can be difficult to judge based just on the model complexity, but is even further complicated by the fact that this explanation may be different depending on the audience. Different parties may be interested in different aspects of modeling or have different levels of experience and knowledge and therefore explainability is dependent on the audience. However, though explainability is difficult to define, it is absolutely crucial for reasons even beyond building trust for AI. First of all, it is important to be able to explain AI so that stakeholders can monitor it to make sure that it is truly trustworthy and mitigate the risk of unethical bias and performance drift. Secondly, it is also now starting to become a legal requirement. Governing bodies are increasingly mandating transparency, auditability, and explainability of AI. Finally, of course, it is important that AI is explainable in order to engender trust that ML models make intelligent, ethical, and beneficial decisions. Let us now look at explainability through the AI Explainability 360 framework. The AI Explainability 360 toolkit is an open source library of algorithms that allow interpretation and implementation of data and machine learning algorithms in an intuitive way and is hosted on IBM Research's trusted AI repository. It contains tools to help explain large quantities of data and explainable models that can help illustrate decisions using weights, factors, similar examples, contrasting examples, and other values. This is a decision tree illustrating all the tools currently included in the library. Let's try to understand them in further detail. On the left are two tools used for explaining data. Protodash is for tabular data, the kind of data that you might imagine represented in a spreadsheet. GIP VAE is for unstructured data like images. These tools select a handful of examples from the entire data set that help illustrate all of the information contained in the data set. We will see them in action later during the case study. On the right hand, we have the tools to explain AI models, both globally and locally. The global tools you see highlighted here are directly interpretable models designed to explain the rationale for the entire model. BRCG, which we will see demonstrated later on, is for classification problems, sorting in instances into one class or another. GLRM is for regression problems, the kind of problems where you are trying to generate a number. Prof weight is specifically for neural networks. Instead of generating its own model from scratch, it will put out insights from an already trained neural net model. Now, maybe we are not interested in explaining the entire model. Maybe we want to know why the model performed the way it did in a specific instance. In this case, we are looking for a local explanation. 
and the AIX360 toolkit has a bunch of tools for these cases. Ted will explain explanations from training data and apply it to new data. Lime makes a mini model just for the one instance, and we will dive that dive deeper into this later. Shap uses Shapley values to pick out what factors most influenced the final outcome. And we will look at this one too. CEM C -M finds contrasting factors in the data to illustrate factors that would change the outcome. Protodash finds similar observations to illustrate the range of factors in the entire data set. Although the AIX360 toolkit is still under active development, it already offers tools to cover a wide range of cases where explainability is important. So let's walk through a case study where we can actually use the tools we discussed before. For this case study, we will be working on the UCI Breast Cancer Wisconsin dataset. The dataset consists of 32 numerical attributes that describe cell nuclei pulled from breast, breast tissue. It presents a clear binary classification problem of predicting whether the mass is benign or malignant. Since the data is part of the SQLN package, it is easy to download and use without the need of any external files. This data set also provides an example of how the same data set and model might require multiple instances for different audiences. An engineer, for example, will want to evaluate the entire model. They will already have knowledge of how a given model works, so their explanation can be fairly technical. A doctor won't care as much about the entire model they will evaluate they will want to evaluate the specific results for their patients they will have a lot of domain knowledge involving breast cancer so they will be probably most interested in diving deeply into data finally the patient themselves would probably have little understanding of machine learning or medicine they may have the least trust and the most interest in understanding how the model has come to its decision. Let us try using Protodash for the data explanation of this model. So uh, why Protodash? As mentioned before, Protodash is the tool for structured data, which is what our data set is. While DIPVA is strictly for unstructured data such as images or videos. Protodash works by selecting observations that are representative of the trends and weights of the larger group so that a user can get a feel for the entire data set. For instance, if asked to choose one observation, it will choose an observation that is closest to the average parameters of the data. If asked to choose 10 observations, it will choose 10 that cover the range of the entire data set. Here on the left, you can see Protodash's choice of three examples. These numbers may not be easily understood by a layman, but a doctor would be able to look at these examples and understand what is contained in the entire data set and provide an expert opinion on its use for modeling. As larger subsets are requested, the observations selected will approximate the statistics of the entire data set, as you can see in the images here. The top image is a histogram of mean radius in the entire data set, and the bottom image is the mean radius in a subset chosen by Protodash. An engineer here might 
be interested in these subsets to use for quick modeling and to get more mathematical feel for the data.